You know, wearing these bulletproof vests, they make you look bulky. You don't look bulky. No, I look bulky. You spend this much money on a suit, you don't want to look bulky. Trust me, you need these things as protection. You don't look bulky. I feel bulky. Look at my rear. My rear's sticking out. I'm not looking at your rear. I'm telling you, my rear's sticking out. I can feel it. Hey, there are other rears I'd rather be looking at. Yours Fine. is not one of them. Fine, you'll think that later. I'm telling you, I still feel bulky. Well, maybe you're too bulky to push the elevator button. Never too bulky to push the button. But it's my turn. No, it's my turn. I push you coming up, I push you going down. That's one whole turn. Fine. But I'm driving the car. All right, you come to a four-way intersection. There's two other cars. Who's got the right of way? They got guns? No, they don't got guns. I do. Yeah, I got an itch under my vest. Yeah? You know my dad? My dad told me before he died, he never had to wear a vest. That's sort of why your dad died. Oh, yeah. Kind of takes the fun out of it. Sure does. Yeah, boss, we see him. Hey, show him who's number one. Absolutely. Ice man cometh. So that's Mario Dante. Oh, that's him, all right. Just a second, sweetheart. Just a second. You are still grouchy today, really. Hey, Vincent's my boss. He's also my friend. So we're here. But I don't have to pretend I'm at a Sox game. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you figure that? Lucky guess. Nah, they got little ears everywhere. Hey, Carbonero, doesn't the FBI have anything better to do with their Saturdays? Don't get yourself in an uproar. Super secret mystery gift. Ah! What do you say to that, huh? <laughs> Wait, look. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bingo. <laughs> Out a noise maker, huh? <laughs> How about taking a hike? Oh, Mr. Meanie. Come on, come on. You gotta get in a party mood and not be such a mean. <laughs> How would you like to wear a nose like that without the makeup? I would not 
like it, sir. Uncle Mario, what are you doing to my clown? Well, I'm sorry, Franco. <coughs> I didn't know it was your clown, okay? Okay. Hey, Mario. Hey, Mr. Rice, man. It's good to see you, eh? What'd you bring me for my birthday, Uncle Mario? Hey, Frankie. No, oh, that's cool. He's a kid, right? Why don't one of you guys go in the car and get the present you forgot to bring in, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, leave that alone. Hey, let's play. <laughs> Woo, what's this? Hot stuff. <laughs> the clown will live. <laughs> he also will not sue. Good, great news. What's, uh, what's happening in Vegas, Murray? It's worse than I thought. Maybe, maybe more for this year alone. It's Ramos. We gotta whack him. What's your advice, Mario? I think with this Illinois Crime Commission thing coming down, whacking anyone would be a big mistake. Sal, Paul, and myself, we ought to go to Vegas and we ought to talk to him. Then whack him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I am just your stupid kid brother. But this time, I am right. Vincent, that kid is a loose cannon. Uh, we come from the same father. But he'll come around sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mario, when are you going to marry Alice? Oh, come on. Look at her with those kids. Why don't I give her some of her own, huh? Yeah, and while I'm doing that, I'll cut my arm off with a butter knife. <laughs> Twelve years you've been playing house, you're going to tell me you don't love him? Well, sure I'll love him. We've had an agreement from the beginning, and it works for us. Yeah, for you it works. Whatever. <laughs> it's a wonderful gift, Mario, but for an eight-year-old. Well, the club's a lass. If you don't want to play, you can always sell it for a good price. What can you get out of toys? Toys are fun. They make kids happy. <laughs> it's things that last in this port. Like you and me, when we were kids, we didn't play with no toys. Yeah, maybe we should have, right? Life's not a game. You're going to take the company plane to Vegas? Yeah, I better call the airport. Hey. You set this up, huh? So you could split the party. Would I do a thing like that? I mean, it's killing me to leave. I love ice cream and clowns and two dozen kids. <laughs> <laughs> Go shop and spend what you need. What I need, huh? Boy, what put you in such a good mood? Business. What else? Yeah, that'll do it. Understanding, right, Tony? Absolutely, Mr. Good. Well, well. Hey, Frank, with all that fat you got to hide behind, you ought to be fearless. Mario, how are you? I'm okay. Huh. Mario, good to see you. Uh, you kind of caught me by surprise, though. I, I mean, if I'd known you were coming, I could have. I could have gone out to the airport and met you or something. We did okay on our own. Yeah, well, uh, we're going to be leaving now. Uh, sorry to barge in on you, Tony. Thanks for taking the time. No problem, Mr. Capizzi. Competitors can always be polite to each other, right? Yeah, very true, Anthony. Very true. 
I fly uh, all the way in from Chicago to talk to your man here about working for Mr. Capizzi. <laughs> you know what your Anthony does to me? Yeah, he spits in your eye, but politely. Exactly. You know, I'd make the same offer to you, Mario, Mr. Iceman, if I ever thought you'd consider it. Mr. Capizzi, I think that might be a big mistake. Yeah, we're out of here. Mario, it's just like he said, he and Fat Frankie came up out here without calling to nothing, and they offered me a job. <laughs> Tony, I flew out here personally to see you. Because the books on this operation, they ain't good. Somebody's skimming tons from us. Now, I come out to talk to you about it. And guess what? You're talking to Louis Capisi about a change of employment? He was talking to me, Mario. Not, I'm not looking Hey, at... Tony. What am I supposed to believe here, huh? I swear to God, I am not skimming. You swear to God you're not playing the doubles with Capizzi and that fat Frank? Absolutely. It's what I wanted to hear. It's what I wanted to hear because I believe you. Good. Thank you, Mario. Well, now that we got that out of the way, Let's make a day of it. Let's make a night of it. I'll call in some ladies and we'll... Not up here, kid. We gotta be back in Chicago tonight, stop by Springfield and visit my sister's kids. Oh, God, man, I forgot about it. What a terrible thing. Angela and, uh, and the husband, that Irish guy, what, Moran or something? What was it, a car wreck? Car wreck. Two years ago today, Grandma takes care of the kids on the husband's side. She's a tough old Irish broad. But she's really good with the kids. <clears throat> Now, what are we going to do about the guy that's ripping us off? We'll find him and whack him out. First, we've got to find him. I'll handle it. Mario, come on. You know I'm loyal to you. If you tell me so, then I know. I tell you so. Then I know. See you, Tony. Yeah, Ramos is definitely our man. You should have handled it then and there. I got another way, Vince, if it's okay with you. We'll talk about it tonight, huh? We'll wait, Mario. We'll hear what you have to say. Yeah. Your place at eight. Uh, say hello to your nephews and nieces for me. Yeah, the nephews and nieces, right. You guys can come in if you want. Uh, thanks, but no thanks, boss. Uh, the same pair of real bad guys. How about you, hon? I want to see their uncle, not his lady friend. Long time, Mrs. Moran. You look great, really great. You look terrific. We received your telegram, Mr. Dante. The children are waiting. Well, I've got to get back to Chicago by uh, tonight. Of course.
Hi, Uncle Mario. In case you don't remember. Since it's nearly a whole year, I'm Mickey, the one who likes you the most of any of us. Football's pretty popular around here, huh? It keeps William and Dean in one place for a definite period of time. That way they don't worry about being jumped or something. I hear you made the team first string. Second string. Well, no problem. Keep plugging. You'll be there. And Beth, you're turning into a very pretty young girl. I'm 15. Biologically old enough to have a baby, so I'm not a girl. Well, yeah, whatever. But I was talking about pretty, not having babies. I think she's beautiful, even with her glasses. Oh, absolutely. There's a game tonight. You could go with us if you like. I bet you Uncle Mario won't be staying that long. John Jr. is correct. Your uncle has to be in Chicago tonight. Yeah, no, for business. I have to get going. Like Beth said, there's a game tonight. Me too. So early? What do you do? You cheerlead or something? I keep stats for the coaches. Stats, huh? Pretty smart, too. Hey, hold on, I almost forgot. I know I've been kind of scarce since your mom and dad. We've seen you twice. In two years. Almost as much as when mom and dad were still here. Probably correct. But it's probably best all the way around. No way. Uh-uh. I'd like to see you all the time. Hey, look, this may not be what you expect, kid. But I missed your birthday and all, so here, for me to you. Thank you, Uncle Mario. For the twins? If you'd get to know us better, you'd know what we liked as individuals. Well, once again, you're probably correct. Thanks for the thought. Bye. See you next year, probably. You should give the game a whirl. I know Springfield's just the sticks to you, but you might like it. Sorry. Bath time. Uh, I'll get the twins, Nicholas. You stay here and say goodbye to your uncle, so he won't be late for his appointment. I hope you can come and see me more often, Uncle Mario. I miss you. Really. You're not gonna cry, are you, kid? I think maybe I am. Nah, come on. You gotta be tough, kid. Can you throw a right hand? All right. Okay. Goodbye, Uncle Mario. Summer Red. Kids are just not my thing. I'll try and get out here more often. It's a little tough, but I swear to God, I'll try to Light get out here. Light your tongue before you swear to something you've no intention of doing, Mr. Dante. Or else God will get you. That you can bet on. Yeah, right. Goodbye, Mr. Dante. Goodbye. Frank, okay? We'll be home soon. Shy town huh? We'll have a nice meal. Yeah, yeah, Shy town Shy town for the peasy. Isn't that what you always say? But I don't know, huh, Louie? Yeah, and so, uh, you got a point you want to make, Frank? Go ahead and make it. You didn't act like you wanted it this morning. Back there with Ramos, when that Dante was making me look like a fool, it was like you respected him more. Like you liked him or something. Hey. When are you gonna learn, huh, Frank? Camouflage in our business is everything. Mr. Capizzi. Hey, sorry to interrupt you, sir, but there's a storm front coming. Hey, we better we're get talking this. here, so get lost. Mr. Capizzi, you know, if we don't leave now, we're gonna you be three. You listening to me? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Hey, Do you understand what I'm saying? Stop this now. Stop it. I'll be right with you, son. Now go away. Hurry. You see? You see what happens when you come after people like that and let them know that you're the enemy? 
You don't play camouflage as good as I do, Frankie. So you, you don't like Dante? No. I like him. A lot. If he wasn't so loyal to the damn Vitalis, I'd have him right up here alongside me. Yeah, alongside us, Frankie, OK? But that's personal. What this is about is a control of Chicago and what we have to do to make that happen. This is business. So I can whack him then? Yeah. When I say you can. <laughs> that makes you happy, huh, Frankie? Yeah, yeah, Louis. Now I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> Toast to Mario Dante, the owner of this wonderful place, without whom we'd be having our reception at the local VFW hall <laughs> and drinking beer instead of Mouton Cadet 86. Salud. 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 <laughs> With your permission. Have a good life, good looking. See you. Bye-bye. He really thinks he's something, don't he? He is, now be good. Mario? <laughs> hey, kids, you didn't tell me you were throwing a party for the entire Chicago's fine, isn't it? It's good politics. I agree. Too much like sucking up to me. Why'd I know you'd say that, Jimmy? Because you're a smart guy, Iceman. Because you are, in your head, the smartest there is, right? Aside from brother, absolutely. <laughs> so we feed Lamos lies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything else is bouge Except for a few things. We give it to Capizzi. Things that won't hurt us. And Capizzi never knows what's real and what isn't. Huh? He has to believe everything just in case. Huh? So he's going around all the time chasing shadows. Jimmy <laughs> <laughs> Pierre! Vincent, I knew you'd like it. <laughs> hey, Dick, Ramos isn't worth a thing. A lie. This guy's worth his weight. Dimentica tutto questa storia di spionaggio. Ho appresso i nostri soldi. Dovremmo ucciderlo. Basta. Vincent, he's your kid, brother. You gotta talk to this guy. Please, Vincent. You explain it to him. I'm gonna go upstairs and see Alice. Cops should know better than to take favors from the Iceman. What favors? I gave these coppers a 10% discount on the facility. You should try the goose liver pate. Thanks. I will. So, Mr. Carbonara, how's the uh, ongoing investigation? Proceeding nicely, Mr. Dante. You and the Vitalis won the first round, but this commission is going to sew you up for good. Only a year left before they send me out to pasture, and I'm going to bust you, you in particular, before then, or go down trying. Why me? Why me, Mikey, in particular? Well, you may not like this, Mario, but you're a legend. No, good media. Mr. Cool, the Iceman. Well known, if you will. I prefer a lower profile. It's too late now, good buddy. You might as well be Billy the Kid with straight teeth, and whoever bags you is going to be just as well known. Instantly. 
And Michael Carbonaire, FBI, goes out with a bang? A very large bang, old buddy. But nothing personal, right? Of course not. It's business. What happens if I take you out first? <laughs> Think about it. I wouldn't be talking to you if I didn't get home all right. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? Hey, kid, do me a favor, will you? I'm kind of busy here. Will you call me tomorrow afternoon? Are you mad at me, Uncle Mario? It's okay, I'll no, no. talk to your nephew. He loves you, too. What the hell? What did you say, Uncle Mario? Huh? I was talking to Alice. Who's Alice? Alice, well, we're, uh, we're sort of, uh, we're sort of engaged, you might say. Can I be in a wedding when you get married? If I get married, you can be in the wedding. Now, you go to sleep. Okay. I love you, Uncle Mario. Yeah, well, thanks. Adios, kid. Don't you love me, Uncle Mario? Yeah, you're, you're my sister's son, okay? And I love you, too. No, we go to sleep, kid, please. I'll say a prayer for you before I go to bed, all right? Yeah. That'd be fine. And so long, kid. So long, Uncle Mario. Hey, Alice. Here I come, Alice. Alice. sense. Both those boys are licensed to carry. You guys didn't get lunch today or something? How about we buy a drink or something? No, talk about this. You guys. Well, we don't get to try it in the car. I knew something was screwy here. All right. By Frank Paolo. Right at the corner, and don't miss. <laughs> Hold the fort. Don't make a call until somebody takes a bullet.
You got a problem. Which one this time? Fat man Paula was set up out there to whack you. Sal and Polly. Cops grabbed them. Probably someone called in a phony complaint. Do you need any help? With Fat Frank? Bite your tongue. How many? Where are they? Two. The shooter, Paula's driver, and Paula himself in the limo around the corner in the alley. <laughs> so he can watch. <laughs> it's kind of hard to figure. But thanks. Wait a minute. If that Frank Ace is me, then Mikey Carbonero's got no big bang to go out on. Ambush, Frank. Dumb. Amateurville. <laughs> Go ahead, Dante. Waste me right here in the, in the public eye. Oh, I'm gonna do worse than waste you, Frank. What are you talking? Does Capisi know about this little hunting trip of yours? Yeah, sure he knows. He approved it. Yeah. Yeah. He may have approved it in general, overall, for business. But does he approve now? With the feds working overtime, eyeballing us, huh? Yeah, of course. Peasy's not that stupid, Frank. Look, don't tell him, huh? I'm asking you, Dante. I, I'm begging you even. Then you gotta quit trying to whack me, Frank. Especially without direct orders. I could get dead, you'd end up the same way. Capiche? Yeah, but you gotta stop making me look like a jerk. I mean, in front of people. I mean, I got feelings too, you know, just like you. I see your point. But if you're so sensitive, why don't you try and do something about it? I mean, go on a diet, jog, pass up the cheesecake, huh? Cuz, I mean, that's who I am now. That's me. I'm Fat Frank Paolo. That's for sure, Frank. That's you. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Fat Frank just tried to whack me. Honest to God. And Mikey tipped me off. Picked up Sal and Polly on a bum rap just as I was about to make my exit. Hi, sweetheart. I'm glad you're OK. It's been some weird day. Could get worse. Come on, Alice. Lay it on me. Mrs. Moran passed away this afternoon while taking a little nap, is what John Jr. told me in the funeral is the day after tomorrow. Gosh, talk about lousy fate or whatever you want to call it. Man, your nephews and niece must feel like they're jinxed or something. I mean, first, the dad and Ma. And then they get, they get used to that. And then Mr. Doom comes in and slaps them with the old grandma. <laughs> Those poor kids. Poor kids? It's me now, I'm it. She said God would give me. Let us pray then for the soul of our dear departed sister, Helen Ann Moran, who has gone to a rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope and eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. When you death. Not much, I'm afraid, Mr. Dante. The state's appointed you legal guardian. Let us assist her. You are, after all, the children's only blood kin. 
Hey, what if? Just what if I said, no, I can't take care of five kids? Foster homes. Boarding school, perhaps. Not bad. Not bad at all. Boarding school. Yeah, high class. It just might. It just... It's my work. with our sister. So, what do you think? About what? Don't be cute. We're talking about boarding school here. What do you think? Does it matter? Yeah, it matters. You aren't going to send us away, are you, Uncle Mario? I'm thinking about it. I mean, kids, my lifestyle, it's gonna clash. But I'm not railroading you. I'm not sending you to San Quentin. I'm talking about a high-class place. Good education, good food, horses. We could also make some absolutely terrific connections. Yeah, exactly. Most of the rich and famous of the world dump their children off at boarding school. Nobody's dumping nobody. Yeah. You got something on your mind? Nothing. Only I figured this would happen. My dad told me you were just a lot of show. Is that what he told you? Yeah. That's right. He said when it came down to doing what's really tough, like the right thing, you'd punk out every time. Guys, please. I'm here to back that up. It would probably be better for us somewhere else anyhow. I've read a lot about you, Uncle Mario. And you're in a very high-risk business. What, well, being in the mob and all? A gangster, Time Magazine said? Old-fashioned and stylish, but still a gangster. I don't care what you heard, and I don't care what you read. I'm no gangster. I'm in the hotel in the gambling business. Okay, I got no guns, no blackjacks. I'm legitimate. Amazing. One minute they're raising cane, the next minute they're out like a light. Play hard, sleep hard. William and Dean do everything that way. They're a bit crazy, I think. What a thing to say about your brothers. An observation is all. You need to get emotional. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. Your uncle could use a dose of it. You too, it seems. Is that why you didn't cry or nothing at your grandma's funeral? It didn't affect me the way Mom and Dad's death did, because I was prepared up here where it counts. Oh. You are like your uncle, but you're both wrong. It's in the heart. Right here is where the real stuff is happening. Up here is where you talk yourself into doing the smart thing, when you really should be doing the right thing. Man, that first punch Polly threw was totally devastating. I've never seen anything so bitchin' in my life. I thought he was totally dead. Who was totally dead? The man Polly punched. <clears throat> What's wrong, Uncle Mario? Do you have any idea what this collection of antique toys has cost me over the last 20 years? I don't even know what antique means. But I'm sorry. He was just playing with them. They are toys, right? These you look at. But you don't know, so it's OK. Go to bed. It's getting late. I'm sorry I played with your antiques and Mr. Mob. Forget about it. Go to sleep. I can't just go to sleep. Mom or Dad and then Grandma Moran used to tell me a story. I'm not much on bedtime stories, kid. So I'm going to have to pass. I'll tell you a story, shrimp. Good. Johnny.
Johnny will tell you a story. Once upon a time, in the land of Chicago, there was this big, ugly, old dragon. And he lived in a cave called the Inferno. And this ugly, old dragon loved to scare people and then eat them for lunch. But especially, he loved to scare little kids by breathing fire and cooking them. And I don't like this story at all. Me neither. I won't need a story, Uncle Mario, if you give me a hug at night. Wise guy, huh? Must be in the blood. Alice, I'm really glad you're here to help me with all this. Listen, honey, I was You gonna... and me, we're a team, right? Mario, you know how I feel about the hey. kids. What's going on here, Alice? I'm gonna move in with my sister for as long as I have to. But why? Is that because of what happened in Springfield? No, it's not about what happened in Springfield. It's a lot simpler than that, Mario. Your nephews and niece are at very impressionable ages right now, and I just don't want them thinking that we're shacking up. But, Alice, we are shacking up. Not in front of the kids, we're not. Aw, oh, sweetheart, I'll help you up as much as I can every day. Just not at night is all. Oh, I have seen that look before, Mario. What's going on? Father Tucci, he's a big guy now. He's a Monsignor. He can find a boarding school for these kids. You go see him tomorrow, okay? No! It is not okay! I love you to death, Mario, but if you're gonna dump those five lovely kids, then you can just go do it yourself! I'll be back tomorrow to give you a hand with anything else. Dean just puked on William. What'd you say? Dean puked on William, and William returned the favor. I need help cleaning up the mess. Where you been? It's 4.30 already. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Kids, you inherit a family, things go a little haywire, right? But I'm working on a deal to make things right. That's why I was late. I just saw Father Tucci. From St. Thysma? Sure, sure, great guy. He's a Monsignor now with a lot of pull. He found a boarding school for me near St. Louis. The twins? Preschool thing run by the Sisters of Mercy. Your family, your problem, your solution. Meantime, we've got some business to tend to, huh? This new crime commission thing that's starting up in one month, for instance? Yeah. Standing in my face, crap my space, a big old brawl getting down on my case. There was nothing I could do. What the hell is going on here? I said to myself, what's the bother? What's the bother? It's Sunday, and I want to be alone. It's a game day. Get out of my home. It's Sunday. It's a time to relax. For God's sakes, Alice. Hey, come on, you guys. You're ruining my suit. Hey, will you guys cease doing that and go back in the kitchen? I talked to the principal at St. Anthony's today about maybe enrolling the kids for the rest of the year. Uh-uh. Not necessary. It's boarding school. 
I talked to Monsignor myself. Two weeks to process their papers. Well, it's not like I'm shipping you off to Devil's Island. This is a terrific place. I mean, you can horseback ride for a credit. How thrilling. I don't be wise. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we know what you're talking about. But why can't we stay with you, Uncle Mario? I don't understand. Not here. Not my world. It just won't fly, kid. Mario? I'll be downstairs. Listen, I wish you guys had gotten a better deal, but you got me. And I'm just too set in my ways. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Again, Jimmy. Me too. Same as him. You don't drink. I'm gonna learn how, okay? Everything's my fault. The homeless, the price of oil, it's all my fault. Do you really hate those kids that much? Well, let's let me tell you something. I want to make a confession, like in church, just between you and me. Yeah? It's not these kids in particular. I mean, they're okay, I guess, as kids go. It's all kids. I don't know what to do with them or how to act. And I have never not known what to do or how to act. Never. That's your confession? Right. Okay, here's your penance. I don't like what you're doing or saying, but I like you. A whole lot. So I'll stick. Thank you very much, Alice. But in the time those kids got left... Hey, wait a minute. You talk like they're on death row or something. For the next week or two weeks or whatever, their uncle and his lady are going to give them something to remember Chicago by. And I'm talking quality time. Deal? Deal. Right. Two more. Ready. Make them double. Quick learner, huh? <laughs> you did good, Alice. You did good. <laughs> I'm married. Here we 
go, sweetheart. So nothing falls. Here you go, okay. oatmeal. Yummy. Here we go. Right into the mouth we go. Come on, here we go. Yeah. I'm telling you, Pop, Dante's niece is really cute. Hey, Stunard, I ain't sending you to college to act stupid. All right? Well, get back to work. Translation. Fruity Odies. I told Louie last week the twins were nuts about that particular cereal. They're nuts, all right. <laughs> hey, Rudy. Come here, kid. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Dante? Rudy Odie. Uh, Pop bought half a dozen boxes, and William and Dean here went through them like sharks. No more Fruity Odies. Uh, get them some more. Uh, if that's what you'd like, Mr. Dante, but uh, recent studies show that Fruity hey, Odies... Hey, Mr. College, are... I'm not interested in any recent surveys, okay? I just want them to shut up. Now, will you get me some Fruity Odies? <laughs> Hey, man. Take the eyeballs off my sister, huh? I'm sorry, uh... You're beginning to sound like a poor imitation of Sal and Pauly. Oh, to me, that's a compliment. Sal and Pauly are great guys. They're friends of yours, aren't they? They work for me. They gave him a nickname. They call him Johnny Fever. Do you know why? Because he always looks peeved off. Nicky! That's what they said. It's great. That's wonderful. Boss, you get a call. So Some lady. Hi, boys. Yeah. Something called human services here in the city. <laughs> Thanks, Louie. Thank you very much. Mario Dante. Gina Pinarelli from the state human... <laughs> what are you, where are you from? The state human services building? I got kids in the background. <laughs> hey, Uncle Mario's on the phone. Can you be quiet for a minute? Which one are you? Tomorrow morning? Yeah, that'd be fine. We'll be there. Yeah, Miss Pinarelli, absolutely. Where's Miss Pinarelli? Social worker. On the nose. Miss Pinarelli wants to interview me tomorrow. And you guys, too. Fruity But only those of you able to interview back. That sounds like a rouse to me. We should get a mouthpiece. It's like what I said before about the mob staying with Mario Dante. Not a good idea, I said. And that's just what Miss Pinarelli is going to express, guaranteed. But do we have to do what some old social worker says? Well, Alice, sweetheart. Do we? Proteodies it is. Rudy! You're afraid of them. Not very likely. Yeah, his reputation is tough. But brains, uh, they'll outdo do tough any time, any place. And you've got brains, right? Well, I got brains enough to know when there's something going on between two people, like you and me, for instance. That's some ego. Hey, then why are you here, huh? You're crazy. Well, fine, I'm crazy. And I know a lot of crazy Chicago places. The dark side, spooky places. Think about it. This is your last payment for the store here, Max. What are you talking about, Mr. Cavizzi? <laughs> well, you had three stores, now you have two. <laughs> See, this store is now franchised out to my future son-in-law, Freddie Stumps. You know Freddie, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Freddie. Yeah. I, I like Freddie. Yeah. I don't like him enough to give him one of my stores. <laughs> Whose store, Max?
not, Dave. The Vitalis. I know. I know. We gotta whack them right now, Louie. No fooling around. You know, this whole crime commission thing is very troublesome to me. I know. I've been thinking about that. The, the, the Fed's spending all their time trying to indict the Vitalis. So we indict the Vitalis for them. To death. For them. Then maybe the Feds will pack up their thing and call it quits. For this year, anyway. <laughs> Could it be you got more brains than I give you credit for, Frankie? I don't know. I'm just anxious to get it done. All right. But one thing at a time. First the head, then the right arm. Mario, then the jerk, Jimmy. OK. Folks, I'll only be a second here. Mr. Dante, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I enjoyed every minute. Yes, well, I'm Gina Pinarelli. A pleasure, Miss Pinarelli. Thank you. And you must be Nicholas, Beth Ann, and John Jr.? Uh, to tell you the truth, hon, I prefer Johnny. All right, then. Johnny, it is. <clears throat> Very well, I'll um, begin at the beginning. For the past week, since being contacted about this case by FBI agent Michael Carbonero... Oh, Mike and I, we go way back. What do you do? Tell you a sad tale about five kids in some gangster environment? Something like that, yes. Well, Mike, he likes to stir things up. You know what I mean? Yes, well, at any rate, we have investigated and... And the state has nothing to sweat, Miss Pinarelli. These kids are going to boarding school. <sighs> I'm not certain if boarding school in itself, although a very positive first move, will be enough, Mr. Dante. What are you saying? Well, during holidays and summer vacation, the children will still be exposed to what you yourself describe as a gangster environment. Maybe he meant that as a joke, but who knows? Yeah, absolutely. A joke. We've never even seen any old gangsters at Uncle Mario's. Hey, just hold it, you guys. Hold it. You really know how to put the screws in, don't you? I am not insensitive, Mr. Dante. But my first responsibility is to the welfare of the children. What I'm talking about is a couple of months a year. Now, I can't turn these guys into bad guys in a couple of months. And look, I'm on your side about this uh, environment stuff. But they are my sister's kids. And I just want to see them once in a while. That's all. was some interview for almost five hours. We did lunch after. We shot a little pool after that. Ah, oh, Mario, you know how I feel about pool halls and the kids. Yes, Alice, I know how you feel. But don't worry. Nobody had a good time. So what happened with this Miss Pinarelli, the social worker? Probation, I guess, is what you'd call it. She agreed with Uncle Mario sending us to boarding school because of the gangsters and the environment and stuff. It's better than splitting us up into foster homes. Either way, it stinks. Hey, the social worker broad, she wanted the whole banana. Where did the state? The works. But I managed to talk her out of it. And like Beth said, it's better than a foster home. You should fight. Hire a lawyer who specializes in this sort of thing. It is not right for them to want to split us up like this. It is not American, and she cannot do it, and you should not stand for it. Hey, Alice, aren't you forgetting something? Hmm? Nothing has changed. I want those kids in boarding school. Except now, the state agrees with me. They're ramming it down your throat is what you mean. I have never seen you bend like this, Mario, ever. Hold on, Alice. Listen to what I'm telling you. No one is bending. I want what they want. Capiche? Lucky for you, isn't it, Uncle Mario? Don't listen to her. It's exactly what I would do if I were you. Hey, with this setup, Alice and all, 
<laughs> no way I'd let some rugrat nieces and nephews come Are in. Are you putting me on, kid? No. Honest to God. I just agree with you is all. What are you becoming, Fever? I don't want you agreeing with me. That's it, Alice. Deal's off. The mob's out of here in five days, period. Now they're agreeing with me. He won't do it. You'll see. Yeah. I'll see, all right. He may say so and he may think so, but when it comes time, he won't do so. Sure, he won't. Rudy, please. Mario? Mario, are you all right? For the first time, Alice, I don't know the answer to that question. You want an answer? I got one. Come on, Alice, will you give me a break? I've been up to my eyes in kids and social workers, and yesterday I forgot to return a call from Vinnie Vitale because John Jr. asked Sally the best way to knock a guy off, and Sally didn't know what to tell a kid. And I'm just not up to one of your answers, Alice. You're feeling lousy because you're being lousy. Insensitive, Mario, very much so. Great, wonderful. You know what's right and what's wrong. That's your problem. You know why we've been together for so long, Mario. I got a definite feeling, Alice, you're going to tell me. And I really don't have the time. Oh. OK. Well, then it's time for me to go. It's OK, Alice. Don't listen. Don't answer. Don't stay. But later on, don't you say this was all my fault. You haven't been returning my calls. In fact, you haven't been in touch with me all week. Vito is being interviewed by that fat buddy of yours. The grand jury is returning its indictment on the 10th. That's in one week. Listen, Vince, I've been up to here with these kids and Alice. They're... Wait a minute, I'll be right back. Take them to the table. Excuse me, kid. This way, Chester. Alice! You're both gentlemen? Yes. Mario, I must talk to you. Are you nuts? Not now, Louis. My son, Rudy, is with your niece, Beth. Someplace on the south side called the Joyride. I try to stop him, but there's no respect anymore. Thanks, Louis. I know how tough this was. You with me, Paulie. You go upstairs, babysit the kids. Oh, come on, boss. I babysat last time. Get the limo. Meet me out in front. Come on, oh, guys. Come Let's move this it. Is... Vincent, my niece could be in some kind of trouble. I gotta go to her. I'm sorry. Go. It's too damn much. I'm telling you, Mario. Vincent, will you please wait here? Have something to eat. I'll be back as soon as I can. I swear to God. And Vincent, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vincent. I'll be right back. Marlinova. Some ice man, huh? <laughs> Taking you home. <laughs> home? <laughs> What's a home? <laughs> hey, we ain't afraid of you, Dante. Yeah, why don't you chill out, Pop? Things get a little nasty for you and your friend. 
<laughs> I think we needed this, you know what I mean? Absolutely, boss. Who do you want first? Start with the big guy. We'll work our way down. All right. Friends like them, you'll never need any enemies, believe me, kid. <laughs> I'm not a kid. I'm Elizabeth Moran, and I want out. Out of your sight, and out of this stupid limo. Hey, look, you want to stop so maybe we can talk about this? I don't feel like stopping. You're acting like a spoiled brat. You know that, don't you? I like acting like a spoiled brat. I haven't had much practice in it lately, and it feels good. Marone, listen. What I did tonight wasn't to run your life. It was to protect you. Why? What for? What's in it for you, huh? Isn't that what the Iceman's all about? Himself? After what happened tonight, I'm sure you could get that impression. But you're wrong. I, uh, I like you, Miss Moran, that's all. Is anybody dead back there at the joyride? <laughs> no, we just spanked him, that's all. Are you worried about Rudy? You like him that much? Not that much. Not really. Then why this whole thing? I understand why you're doing this, Uncle Mario. And I don't hold it against you. I suppose that's when you know you really love somebody. It's all right, my heart, Mario. This crime commission thing, and now some rumble about a hit. Marlon, oh, where's the ice, man? What rumbles about it yet? You saved my butt. Three times you saved my butt, Maury. You ain't saved yet. Damn it, Bitson. How many times I gotta tell you? You gotta wear the vest. Boy, it wounds the line of the suit. It looks terrible. Two thousand dollar suit and the. Come on, now. Who are you cursing at, huh? <laughs> Where is he, Danny? What is taking so damn long? I got the crime commission. I got no Mario. The world just isn't in any kind of water anymore. Just like a movie. A hit goes down on the dawn, and his troops gather to carve out the family strategy. You're such a jerk, Johnny. That could have been Uncle Mario who'd been shot instead of Mr. Pataya. Yeah, but it wasn't. The Iceman's too good. Too sharp or something like Look that. Look it! It's about time. What took you so damn long, huh? Your brother's been shot. He's in intensive care. He's alive. He's hanging in there. Is there anything else you want to know, Jimmy? Well, that's just great. Terrific. So, what are we going to do about them shooting Vincent down like a dog, huh? What are we going to do? I say war. 
right now, without waiting for nothing. That's just what the Capizis want. Mr. Dante, good afternoon, sir. And I apologize beforehand that this visit must be for purposes other than social. Who is this broad? The shooting of Mr. Vitale this morning and the subsequent news on all the channels with photos that you, Mr. Dante, were present during said shooting has convinced me that my first instincts regarding your niece and nephews was correct. Miss Pinarelli, the children are not involved in any of this? I mean, they're out of town by the end of the week. I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. And I thought it only fair that I confront you face to face and let you know that I intend to push for an immediate inquiry by the state board. Well, someone tell me who this crazy broad is. Jimmy, this is Miss Pinarelli, Human Services. This is Jimmy Vitale, brother of Vincent Vitale. And these gentlemen are Mr. Vitale's friends and associates. Friends and associates. That's right. Friends and associates of Vincent Vitale, the man we work for. Junior, Beth, and Nikki, you're missing. The twins are upstairs watching a tape. It's last year's Super Bowl. We got them hypnotized. Hey, this isn't funny. We're responsible for those kids. Everything's cool, Alice. We're not any place we ain't supposed to be. That's a definite matter of opinion. You guys remember Miss Pinarelli? A little skinny. Not bad for a kid with a degree. If I could legally do so, Mr. Dante. I'd remove these children from the premises here and now. Miss Pinarelli, these kids are in no danger. It's kind of an unwritten law we have about women and children. You know what I mean. Law? What would you and your kind possibly know about law, Mr. Dante? No, I'm going to fight you on this one all the way. Hey, chicken legs! Why don't you start with me, huh? Jimmy took off. He didn't say nothing. He was busy with all this stuff. He got a crazy look in his eye, took the boys, and ran. Bring the limo on the back if everything looks right. Give me a call. I'll bring Alice and Bob down, OK? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you sending us away because we eavesdropped on you guys this afternoon? It's a precaution, a just-in-case sort of thing. Or just in case what, Uncle Mario? I think we should stay. At least me, anyway. It's not your responsibility. Just in case what? It's my responsibility. I made up my mind. I think we should stay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just in case what, darn it? Just in case the guys who shot Mr. Vitale show up here. Mario, open up. It's me, Jimmy Vitale. Come on, man. I'm hanging out to dry here. Sorry to barge in. I came here because I figured it's safest. Why safest? Everybody knows we hate each other's guts, so they'll never think of looking for me here. Besides, I got a little chore for you to handle. And since Vincent is not available, you'll take the order from me. Alice, go watch some TV in the other room with the kids. Right, sweetheart. Right, sweetheart. What's your? You and Louis Capizzi. What about me and Louis Capizzi? You're the only Vitali man he trusts, especially now. So? So, you will set up a meet to settle the present crisis. And when you are close enough, you will whack the Rose Bowl Macho who had my big brother shot. You got anything to drink around here or what? That way is you. Right. Take him alone? 
Yeah, with me and the Iceman, it's personal. gonna do I know what I'm not gonna do but Mario the kids and Jimmy so crazy it's the kids that make everything different they turn it all upside down for just us I would have already cooled this guy and put him to bed oh. yeah boss Luis the bus boy he says there's somebody on the fire escape to your place Someone who? Someone? Someone with a gun. Someone who don't need a bulletproof vest. Capish? <laughs> what was that? It sounded like glass, Mr. Vitale. What's going on? That Frank's paying us a visit. Perfect. Well, whack old Frank. Hey, nobody's gonna whack nobody, especially here. Big bad ice man. His guts could turn the mush over a bunch of kids. Nikki, you stay here. What can I do for you? Do you want to see my Uncle Mario? Yeah, I did. What's the deal here, Dante? Nothing special. Just relaxing in the bosom of the family. That's all, Frank. My information was they were to be absent. At boarding school, something like that. Day before yesterday's when they left. A week from the day before yesterday's when they leave, Frank. Oh, did you want to see us? No. Nikki, go ahead, watch a little TV, will you? I wanted this real bad. Frank, I know how disappointed you gotta be, but don't let that push you into something that your own boys won't forgive you for. I mean, in front of a man's family, that ain't right, right? This is a lousy thing for you to pull, Dante. Everything works out for the best, Frank. You were spotted on the fire escape. I would've been ready, you know what I mean, Frank? You know, I used to do that kind of thing, no problem, in, out, no sweat. Now, maybe... Maybe I am getting sloppy, but they were not supposed to be here. They were not supposed to be here. You went down a fire escape. Gonna whack that Frank. Call the police! Would you get them out of here anywhere but here? I'll give you a hint. You just stay back or I'm gonna knock you back. Mario, for God's sake! Please, Uncle Mario! He's got a gun, Uncle Mario, and he don't! Alice, Alice, will you please help me? The, the twins! Tally man, always a Vitaly man. You've come to help me whack the fat one, right? Wrong. No kids now, Ice Man! Thank you. 
That's a war. I'm out of here. Sorry, folks. Just a little misunderstanding. Naturally, nobody pays for nothing tonight. It's all on me, okay? Everything in the house, everybody, huh? You still one of your wise guy? No, sir. Dumb and square is fine with me from now on. They're all stand-up guys. Now, if you want to collect the insurance, we got to make this legal. Are you talking marriage? On two feet. With love. And with logic. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> oh. Everything Miss Pinarelli said, Your Honor, is pretty close to the facts, and if you were to your decision on that, then what I have to say won't mean much, but I'd like to say it for you, Your Honor, but I'd also like to say it for my, for my niece and my nephews. I, uh, I was born in a jungle, Your Honor. That's, uh, that's not an excuse. It's just uh, a simple truth. And sometimes I got a little confused about what was right and what was wrong, and I'm still, I'm still not positive about a lot of things. When the grandma passed on and uh, I had to take care of the kids, I wasn't really thrilled. But, but I've changed, Your Honor. I'd, li I'd like very much to keep them. Now, I know, I know that I have to change my environment. And, and I'm getting married to Alice. And if you'll just give me a chance, Your Honor. We'll give it a very, very best shot. But no foster homes and wards of the state. That's not a family, Your Honor. Perhaps not, Mr. Dante. Tell me why you want these children, Mr. Dante. The real reason. No hedging your bet, remember. I want to hear you say it. Now. It's okay to say it, Mr. Dante. It's okay to say it, Mr. Dante. I love you guys, and I, I want you to, uh, I want you to be my family, even the twins. Children, what do you say? Absolutely. Yeah. We got it? Are we a family? Huh? Okay. All right, good. Give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. Vincent, I'm sorry about your kid brother getting busted. Hey, maybe prison will give him and uh, Fat Frank some character. Huh? Who knows? Hey, maybe you, Goomba. You're out. 
You're on your own. The inferno you keep, <laughs> it's yours anyway. But otherwise, you're no longer connected. That's my wedding place. Me to you, huh? Okay. But uh, I can still come by the inferno for a, a nice plate of calamari every once in a while. Anytime, Vincent. Anytime. It's gonna be okay, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be a real family, right? Right? Hey, the light's perfect. Everybody, pose for the camera. A real family, right? Mario's mom. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>